come and ride a geet. Now we can work out what does the fox say. Keza, Henshin. Now, with that terrible intro and the end of Revice, which I haven't got to watch yet, so no spoilers, please. Come and ride a Fortnite. Uh, uh, oh, sorry. Come and ride a geet. Steps up to the plate, starting its runtime tomorrow. And yes, it's been a while since I've uploaded, as I was ill and uh, other things happened. Uh, let's just say. August hated me. Anyway, we recently had the preview and press conference where we saw more of the mechanics and the characters. So we will be going through each character, the motifs, the world we are in, and much more. Maybe even some theories. You know how I love my theories. Either way, let's get into Geats one last time before the release tomorrow. And what can I say except it's gonna be a wild ride. Hold on and let's go. So the premise, Kamen Rider Geats, the fourth season in the Reiwa era of the Kamen Rider show, is influenced by the idea of Battle Royale, taking on inspirations from online Battle Royale games such as Fortnite and Apex Legends. And I mean, it was gonna happen sooner or later, guys. Fortnite has and is in everything. They recently got Destiny. But with guns, fighting and competition, it kind of makes sense. But at the same time, I am unsure that I am fully convinced. As I said in a previous video, Kamen Rider is normally about people coming together to work as one to overcome the villainous tyranny of the enemy. But the fighters are not fighting necessarily only for the survival of the human race. The game in which they are fighting in is called the Desire Grand Prix. And the fighters are competing for the ultimate reward, which is, bear with me, the right to bring an ideal world to life. That is the prize. How convoluted and complex. The villains as mentioned before are the Jamato, a mysterious enemy that looks like this. The Jamato, not Tomato. Oh my gosh. Anyway, there isn't much to say about them yet as we know very little, but I have my theories. The series catchphrase, however, is this game. The winner in the end is me. Now onto who me could possibly be. We shall now discuss the cast and trust me, it's a big one, so bear with. Acting as this year's main protagonist, we have Kamen Rider Geats, Ace Yukio, acted by Hideyoshi Khan, the headliner. Ace is confident, funny, and has many mysteries to his past, apparently, and is one of two riders who have more powers than the others at the beginning, who are still only in their entry forms. His theme is fox slash kitsune, with apparently a kabuki style, which is a classic Japanese performance form of theatre, often with dance and drama and, and elaborate makeup and costuming. He is also donned with Magatama, which are curved beads that have spiritual power and lead to good fortune. As the Kitsune theme suggests, he is all about fortunes, karma, and spiritual energy, which I find fascinating. More on that later. Next, we have the Kamen Rider Tycoon, Keiwa Sakurai played by Ryuga Sato. He is a nervous college student, and from what I can tell from the trailers, is just trying to make it in the world, going to interviews and being really nervous, and is very honestly human with his fears and doubts. He just wants the best for people and wants world peace. And for those Kamen Rider Shinobi believers, I guess this is your rider, as his theme is ninjas and tanukis. Just wanted to pause the video a second and state in my last video I predicted them using another Japanese mythical creature, and stated that tanukis would be a fun idea because of, um, I, I, I mean, uh, oh, okay, if you know, you know. I didn't expect it to actually be true, but I guessed correctly, so I guess carry on. I, I honestly just wanted to say, uh, yeah, I got it. I can see this rider being one for the people, hoping just to save them, but also having to brave past his own fears as he is seen cowering behind trees. I think his character will be very interesting to watch. Next, and probably my favorite rider so far, other than the Kitsune themed one, we have Kamen Rider Nago, Neon Kurama, played by Yuna Hoshino. She's yellow, and a cat, and an influencer? I love it. As mentioned before, she is a celebrity influencer with the beauty and the wealth to go with it. But she just wishes to be normal and leave the limelight behind. I just love her aesthetic and I think she will be fun, like Haruka from Don Brothers. But it is sad that she is the only female rider this season so far. It's a shame as I was hoping for more females in this large ensemble, but oh well. Common Rider Buffer is next, named Michinaga Azuma played by Kazuto Makudai. He seems moody, competitive, and as most of you have theorized, maybe even evil, or has killed people. Firstly, that's dark. But this is a possibility, as he is the only other rider with Geats to have another form or power at the start. Also with his theming being water buffalo and zombie. And he's wearing purple. How 
dare he? Also, I've seen enough animal documentaries to know where this goes. But the zombie theme is interesting to me nonetheless. Now for a rider theme we have never had. We have a penguin themed rider, Kamen Rider Ginpen. Takakito Taira, played by Tomoharu Hasegawa a personnel manager of an IT company who works with the Desire Grand Prix. I don't know how you got involved, sir, but your workmate must not have liked you very much. However, his stoic nature as an older gentleman makes sense with the stoic nature of the patient penguin, standing tall as they brave the cold, freezing storms. W w wait a second! What are you doing in Japan, penguin? Get back to the icy cold! Kamen Rider Mary is an interesting one, and I can honestly say, I was not expecting this. We have Kamen Rider Mary, who is themed after a sheep. Yeah, Bar Bar Black Sheep, have you got any more guns? Morio Koganea is this Bo Peep, and he is played by Koji Abe, and he seems actually really nice. But this could be a typical misdirect, and he's actually the worst of them all. A perfect sense of misdirection, acting tough while looking so cute. But he also is very smiley, so maybe not. Or even acting nice, and he is actually evil behind the scenes. Now where things get confusing, we have Kamen Rider Shiroe and Kamen Rider Dapan. So a polar bear and a panda. They look so similar, so I got confused when they got announced. And this may have future repercussions, but oh well. Shiroe is Takashi Gotokuji, played by Yamato Kinjo, a firefighter whose theme is a polar bear? What is going on? And then Dapan is Kanato Sumida, who is played by Ryonasuke Miyamoto, the panda who could be a student and he looks okay. super smug. So a bochama? A rich young master possibly. But for some extra characters, we have Sumuri, played by Kokoro Aoshima, who is a mysterious woman who helps the riders in the Grand Prix. And honestly, with a black and white Unus Arnis color palette, I was certain she was going to join the riders as the panda, but I was mistaken, mm. obviously. She seems to have a digital world where she resides or works from, and she seems to have an understanding and knowledge of the enemy, and may know more than she lets on. Hmm, interesting. We then have Garoli, who is apparently a concierge who works at the Temple of Desires, where the riders gather. How fancy. Played by Shugo Oshinari. And finally, we have Sara Sakurai, sister to Keiwa, played by Nene Shida. Now I know that's a lot of names and characters, so apologies, but let's finally move on to a few tidbits and then theories. Firstly, the theme song this season is being done by Kodo Kumi and Shonan no Kaze, the OG Gaim singers, and I'm excited to hear it as the Gaim song was a real vibe. Secondly, is the power. To be a rider and participate in the games, each of the riders have a desired driver and a core ID that holds their rider powers. They start in their entry forms, and with buckles that are power-ups such as the boost and magnum buckle that are added to the driver, they can share and use different weapons and forms. These powers are split between the top half and the bottom half when two are used and each bring a new form. Now, something I found interesting when watching the Kamen Rider Geats cameo in the final episode of Revice. Spoilers ahead, so shh. Ace confronts Iki when he holds onto a box, stating that this is this area's treasure drop. So, they must have to search for the treasures in order order to collect the power-ups or buckles, and maybe this is how they even got the rider positions. As you see here in the trailer, Ace is congratulated on his position of rider while on a beach in a big coat, maybe having searched for a long time in tough conditions. Just an idea. And final tidbit, which is just a small one. There seems to be multiple areas or game stages in the season. For example, we have the Temple of Desire, maybe a digital world, but definitely not on an earthly plane. And the treasure drops, where the riders have to search for the buckle box. I'm excited to see more of this world. Now my favorite part of these videos, the theories. And please add your theories and thoughts in the comments down below as I will be in Toka Predictions this year with Hawkeyes to discuss Geats. First theory is that maybe this game or the Jamato were made by humans and the way to deal with the issue is to just dangle the idea of an ultimate wish or a desired world to fix their issues. You know what Mary Poppins always said, make chores fun by making it a game. Okay, she said it a bit more eloquently than I I did, but you know what I mean. Get others to do your dirty work. Easy. And this leads me to my next theory. The end wish is fake. It's a fake goal to make people band together to fight hard to deal with the issue. Also, why would you risk losing your power if you are the government by offering the right to bring an ideal world to life? Or this could maybe just not be a wish? I assumed it would be a wish, as it is described so vaguely, but now I am unsure. 
How would this ideal world come to fruition anyway? And is there someone to step in if the wish or desired world is too destructive? But this idea of everyone with an alternative ideal world, alternative ambitions, is interesting as we see people who believe in different things fight for their aims, selfish or not. And normally you are led to believe that the stronger you are, the higher chance you have. Would this be true here? Let's see. Another theory is this world may connect to the world of Don Brothers. Of course it eventually will with the Versus movie, but I mean more on a technical sense. Now due to me being ill and away, I have not caught up with Don Brothers, sorry. But my main theory for the Sentai show is that it's a simulation or a game of some sort. So as wishes are made and it can change the whole world and nobody will even notice. As well, this world seems to be surrounded by a digital world and a real world. I find the similarities oddly appealing. We shall see. And my final theory, but it's more of a question. Why are all the riders themed as animals? And is there possibly a deeper meaning to the animals chosen? For example, the seven deadly sins, maybe? I don't know. We have a sheep, kitsune, buffalo, tanuki, cat, penguin, panda, and polar bear. And the only things I can guess the meanings of them are to be sleep or comfort for the sheep, fortune and luck for the cat in kitsune, tanuki for mischief and trickery, the buffalo who is also zombie for death maybe, or strength for the buffalo, pride or patience for the penguin, and uh, that's where the meanings end. Don't know what the panda or the polar bear mean. And why are they so similar? If you can work out this theory or come up with a better one, please do. But that is it. Our next common Rider starting tomorrow with the Desire Drivers and their core IDs. Let's hope the right person can win for the sake of humanity. I love the theming of fortune and myth for Geats and uh, still a bit confused on the name but either way I hope you guys are as excited as I am I'll chat to you next time Kazenshin Matinee